Okay, you guys, if there's one thing that I can help you with, 100% help you with that I know inside and out, and that's how to change your eating habits. You are looking at someone who used to eat terribly, terribly. I would, I wanted, I desired to lose the weight so much. And I would come up with these, I would come up with these eating plans that was borderline maybe genius you know oh I can do this and do that in my mind I thought it was you know genius like um if I do this you know I'll lose the weight really fast and all these great things are gonna happen and I would go through a, a few days of my eating plan and day three day four sometimes if I really you know mm, pushed hard two weeks in I'd have an awful day and I'd say screw it I just can't do this I'm telling you, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, I think part of it is understand what you're eating, right? I think that if people could just know what's in their food instead of sticking their head in the sand like an ostrich and not really paying attention, like whatever, it tastes good, I don't care, you know, or, or it's cheap and I don't have a ton of money, so... I don't care, you know, like I actually had somebody in the grocery store recently tell me, um, oh, you like that grass fed stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I really do. And they're like, oh, you know, I think it just tastes weird. And I'm like, I get it. You know, I, I used to think it tasted weird too. But now that I know what's in my food, that statement sounds ridiculous to me because I know what commercial farmers put in their food what they feed the animals. I mean, do you know what an animal byproduct is? I didn't. I didn't know what that was. That's animal poop. They're feeding the livestock animal poop. That's what animal byproducts are. They're they're giving them this this I mean, if you could just see the list of medications that these animals get. You might feel a little lied to like you know, if I was taking all these medications, I would need to know and I would like to know what the side effects of all these medications are before I put them into my body, right? Right. Think about that. Really stop and think about it. If I knew what was in my food, maybe I wouldn't eat it as much. That's number one. And I mean, and you can read about it and kind of, okay, I get it. You know, that sounds gross. I mean, obviously I don't want to eat some chicken that's been eating poop, right? But when you really start to study and you really start to understand, like they say, knowledge is power. Well, I don't agree with that. I think execution of knowledge is power, right? Because you can have all of this information, you can know it, but do you really know it? You don't really know it until you put it into practice. And think about it, your mind and the way you think is the driving force of what you do. Everything you do is preceded by a thought. So get to know what's in your food. Like start to understand, hey, uh, understand what carbohydrates do to your body or, um, you know, the, the byproducts of like processed carbohydrates like phytates and um, all the GMO crap that they put in your food. Start to kind of understand what happens and how it actually draws nutrients out of your body. Kind of understand that when nutrients are pulled out of your body, that kind of explains why you get the subliminal message to eat more food, eat more food, eat more food. If you're not getting nutrients into your body when you eat, you're going to get a message from your body that says, hey, you know, you just ate, but... I don't, I got to keep your brain functioning and your heart functioning and I still need magnesium and potassium and all these other minerals and vitamins that you're not getting into your diet. So even if you don't even realize it, you're getting messages from your body that you need to eat more food. So if you make a habit out of going through the drive throughs or just buying crap from the grocery store and throwing it in your oven and feeding it to yourself and to your family you might find yourself eating more than what you think you may want to because you're not getting nutrients and your body is asking you for nutrients. And you might think of that as a hunger signal, but instead of giving your body more nutrients, what do you do? You go and you get 
fast food or you know a frozen pizza or whatever because that's what you know that's gonna fill your stomach and it's gonna taste good it doesn't take any thought process in order to eat those things right so you can change your eating habits you can it's just gonna take a little bit of understanding yourself putting a little bit of research into what's in your food maybe um you know, start with what you like. If you know there's a certain vegetable that you can tolerate or that you really like, start eating more of that. My husband really likes broccoli. He's not really a big spinach and kale fan like me, but he'll eat broccoli. So I try to make sure that we have a lot of broccoli in the house because I know that's one green that he will actually eat, right? The diet that works is the one that you can stick to. Start there and then work your way down. When I first started this, I did not eat the organic and the grass fed and I didn't eat like that I just was like okay I'm learning about food I'm trying to try to figure all this out I am going to just eat real food well I wasn't I didn't really care if the eggs were pasture raised or you know organic or you know if they had <laughs> had animal byproducts in the mother hen or whatever I just knew that they were eggs period I would get them, would purchase them, and we would eat them. That is a great place to start, just eating real food. Eggs are real food, right? Start there. Chicken. You know, I didn't really pay attention to whether or not they had antibiotics or um, antidepressants or growth hormones or whatever in the chicken. I didn't pay attention to that. I just saw that it said chicken on the package, I brought it home, I cooked it. it. It wasn't it wasn't chicken pot pie, it wasn't chicken with glaze and seasoning on it, it was just chicken that was raw that I had to cook and put on the table. If you can start there, just make a commitment that, hey, I'm gonna start preparing my food. I'm gonna start being prepared for the week. I'm going to start Stop putting my head in the sand. I'm going to start paying attention to making sure that we have real food throughout the week to eat. If you could start there, maybe eliminating some of the processed stuff. I would throw, you know, when I wasn't doing keto and I was just trying to clean up my diet, I would throw blueberries and oatmeal and chia seeds in a jar. And I would take that to work with me. And that's what I would have for my breakfast or whatever, and maybe a hard boiled egg or something like that. Like I was just trying to clean up my diet. And if you think about all the chemicals and the, the processing that goes into our food, if you can just start there, just start eliminating some of the chemicals that you're taking into your body every day without even having to really worry about like carbs and sugars and if you're getting your macros dialed in and all those kind of things, start small, just start small. Changing your eating habits means getting nutrients, getting food in your diet, eliminating the frozen pizzas, eliminating, you know, that stop to McDonald's that you make every day and that, that little, oh, okay, well, I'm just getting a kid's happy meal. It's a small little meal. You're still introducing bad gut bacteria to your stomach, to your gut. Think about that you literally will crave what you put in your stomach. You know, if you have to start by saying, okay, I'm not getting a happy meal this time. I'm just going to buy what I really, really, really want. And I'm just going to get a small French fry. Start there. Okay, fine. You know, I'm just going to get a small French fry every day until the point where you can say, you know what? I can pass McDonald's today. I'm just going to keep going on my way home and I'm just going to skip it. Little wins like that over time that you can continue to add to will help you change your eating habits. Think about this. I truly believe that every time that I failed on a diet was because I would try to make too many changes at once. And think about it like a ladder. If you put a ladder against a wall and your goal is to reach the roof, right? You're putting it up against the outside wall. You need to get on that roof. It's really important that you get on that roof. You're not going to jump seven rungs on that ladder and try to, to make it to the roof. No, you, you, what would happen? You would land on your back, flat on your back and hurt yourself. 
is kind of the same kind of idea when you're trying to change a major life thing like eating habits because eating it's so ingrained in everything we do we have to do it to sustain our bodies <clears throat> we do it for social situations we do it for all different kinds of reasons it's not just for nutrition it, it's in our culture as well but it's something that is so deep in our subconscious the triggers that we have around food um, the family reasons that we have around food it's very important that we think about it as like a ladder get on that first rung and if you have to just hang on for a little while study yourself continue to stay on that first rung right so if your first rung is i'm just gonna eat food i don't i'm not gonna worry about if it's organic or grass-fed or any of these other things i'm just going to start by eating food or i'm just going to start by eliminating that big bowl of ice cream that i have every night watching netflix it start there is if that's step one if you know you know what step one is for you right you know i just need to like i said stop eating the ice cream while watching netflix or stop ordering pizza every night and actually have a real meal with my family like chicken and rice and broccoli or whatever if step one is for you, like you kind of are okay in those areas, you just want to start eating real food, get on that first rung, hold on. When you feel steady enough, you can take the next rung. I tried to jump seven rungs and I would land flat on my back every time. The reason why I've had the success in changing my eating habits, and I'll show you guys soon what I eat in a day but I don't want it to be intimidating because the way I eat is pretty clean and I get a lot of medicinal herbs and things like that in my diet but it's because I was sick guys pain is a powerful motivator powerful motivator if you're not in pain and you're doing this and you just want to do it I congratulate you it took me being in a lot of pain to really figure it out it took me watching my son go through chemo to really figure it out. Sometimes people have to be pushed before they can make a change. If you're in that stage of your life where you're not getting pushed, you're not watching somebody that's sick, you're, you're okay, you're just wanting to be healthier, you know what? You're probably a better human than me. I don't know, but I was sick and I don't want it to intimidate you. I want it to inspire you on what is possible because this is the girl that is a professional baker that was a alcoholic bartender so to speak because I was addicted to sugar and as a bakery manager and so you know we bake up fresh stuff and I would bring it home or and dive right in or you know my husband would say or my my boyfriend at the time now he's my husband would say like oh you need to make some cookies or whatever so i'd be in the kitchen making cookies and you know i didn't care because i was a sugar addict too so i'd be in there making cookies or brownies or whatever but you can do it you can change your eating habits to be healthy start one step at a time and it starts here in your mind how you think about the food that you're preparing or eating um just paying attention to your triggers and actually getting real food and real nutrients into your diet and forgiving yourself when you mess up and just learn use it as use your mess ups as an opportunity to pay attention to yourself and figure yourself out why did i do that what is it that triggered me what can i do differently next time instead of condemning yourself and beating yourself up over it learn from it and make it a step in the right direction because now you're armed with information and you can use that the next time so even if you do it again you script you go oh man i see what i did i did it again it just it's another opportunity to learn just keep treating it that way be kind to yourself treat it as an opportunity to learn and you'll get it you will get it you can do this you can